In 1977, the famous Powers of Ten film was created by the Eames office. Starting with a picnic, every 10 seconds, the scene zooms out by a power of 10 shown by blue squares, all the way till seeing billions of galaxies. The same thing happens in reverse, so it would zoom in until seeing an individual proton. Ever since being on YouTube since 2010, people have been making their own versions such as Cosmic Eye, Metric Paper, and others. Ever since watching these videos months ago, I've wanted to make my own version, but since I couldn't do this at my house for obvious reasons, I had to wait till June on a field trip to Philadelphia to make this video you are watching now. Here's the main city of Philadelphia. And here's a single blade of grass. We will start to zoom out in a few seconds. In this video, we are actually going to be zooming out by a power of 10 every 12 seconds instead of 10, so I can blurt out some more science facts. As we zoom past 10 meters, we start to see the Delaware River and a nearby aquarium. You can also start to see about a dozen trees forming an entire column. To the right of the square screen, we see the aquarium I mentioned earlier. By the way, the measurement on the left shows how big the blue square shown is, and the right side shows the same thing, but has a power of 10 in meters. Approaching one kilometer, we see the entire width of the Delaware River. As of right now, we are now able to see the entire city of Philadelphia. Zooming out further, we are now able to see the Delaware River as if it was some sort of small straw. 10 to the power of 5 meters, we can now start to see the Atlantic Ocean, then the entire state of New Jersey. In a few seconds, we will be able to see all the states of New England. Now we're starting to see other countries like Canada. We can now see the entire Earth as a whole. For the rest of the zooming out, we will see a lot more of the vacuum of space. One surprising science fact is that the moon's orbit around the Earth is actually much further out than what a lot of people think. The moon can be as far away as 30 Earths. Wait, what happened to the music? Hey! Hey, where'd the music go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. The moon's orbit around the Earth may be big, but it's nothing compared to the Earth's orbit around the Sun. 10 to the power of 10 meters, 10 million kilometers, we start to see Earth's path. This really shows how big Earth's orbit around the Sun really is. Then we start to see all the other three rocky planets' orbits, Venus, Mars, and Mercury, then the Sun. In between Mars and Jupiter, we have the asteroid belt. Jupiter's orbit is about three times longer than Mars's orbit. Here are the other planets, Saturn, Uranus, also known as Uranus, and Neptune. We can now see the Kuiper belt and the most popular dwarf planet, Pluto. We now start to see Eris and Sedna's orbit around the Sun. Two objects that orbit the Sun that are even further than Pluto. Much further. Approaching 100 billion kilometers, we reach 1% of a light year. Then something cloudish appears. It is what's known as the Oort cloud. Made up of rocks, ice, comets, and gas, it surrounds the solar system and is about a light year long. A light year is a unit of distance in which light travels for an entire year. It's not exactly 10 to the power of 16 meters, but it is a good estimate. It's actually about 9.5 trillion kilometers. We've now reached 10 light years. We are now able to see other stars from great distances. Each star is so far away from each other, the closest star to the sun is four light years away. We're soon about to see the entire Milky Way galaxy as a whole, but we're not there yet. We still have about 24 seconds until actually seeing the entire thing. Another fun science fact, although the Milky Way galaxy orbits a supermassive black hole, not all galaxies orbit one. The Triangulum Galaxy is a great example. Here it is everyone, 
the Milky Way galaxy. It looks like one long blue noodle with a yellow meatball hey. in the middle. Hey, that's out of context. Mm, I'm hungry now. Now, instead of seeing many groups of stars, we're now going to see many groups of galaxies. The closest galaxy to the Milky Way is the Andromeda Galaxy, which is where that big purple dot is. Entire groups of galaxies are now shown. Approaching 100 million light years, we start to see superclusters. We are almost done zooming out. We are almost at the observable universe. At last, we are here, the observable universe. Measuring at about 93.4 billion light years, this is as far as we know. But what if this wasn't the end? There could be an infinitely large universe beyond this. We just don't know yet. Zooming back in dozens of times faster than we zoomed out, we will eventually reach the blade of grass we saw in the beginning of the video. Oh my god, I can't with this. Hi! Hi! Music, please! Oh. Oh, okay, it's back. Now that we're zooming in, we now require negative exponents for the measurement to the right. Each one of those bricks you saw was 10 by 20 centimeters. But now that we're zoomed in too much, we can only see one. And soon the only thing we will be able to see is the blade of grass. This next square is a millimeter, which is the shortest distance a ruler can measure. We will soon be able to see individual plant cells. Cells are known to be the building blocks for life. And plant cells are anywhere between 10 to 100 micrometers on average. But there could be cells that are smaller than that range, like the red blood cell. We are now able to see individual plant cells where we could see the nucleus. Unlike other organelles, this one is the brain and controls what the other ones do. Approaching 10 micrometers, we can start to see chromosomes inside the nucleus. Each one of these chromosomes contain a long molecule of DNA. The DNA's backbone is made up of deoxyribose, sugar, and phosphate groups. The middle part of the DNA is made up of four nitrogenous bases, which are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. All future objects don't actually have a color because they are all smaller than visible light waves. Instead, objects like these will be represented by a color, like how protons are red, but we'll get into that later. Let's talk about atoms. DNA is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus atoms. And the atom we are about to zoom into is nitrogen. We are now approaching one nanometer. There's a unit of distance used to measure atoms, and that is the angstrom which is a tenth of a nanometer, or 100 picometers. Now let's see what's inside of this nitrogen atom. There's nothing! In every atom, most of its volume is just empty space. That small little cluster you see at the center is the nitrogen nucleus, made up of seven protons and seven neutrons. The protons are the red circles and the white circles are the neutrons. There are also the negatively charged electrons in this atom, but they're just too small to see. Each one of these subatomic particles is about one femtometer wide. Going inside the positively charged proton, we start to see quarks. The quarks are not made up of any smaller particles, which makes them elementary. There are six different types, however, only two of them are necessary to talk about. 
The green quarks are the down quarks, and the blue and red quarks are both up quarks. Each one is around one atometer wide. And the other four types of quarks are very different in size. Note that we are not going inside the quarks, we are going right through them. There's only one more object to talk about before reaching the end. I just have no idea where they are. Where are they? Oh, never mind. These fast-moving particles are neutrinos. And you know they're fast because they face through matter at nearly the speed of light. They also have a big range of size being as big as a zeptometer and as small as one yoctometer. Since there's nothing left, in about 24 seconds, we will start to zoom three times faster. One more fun fact, the prefixes Ronto and Quecto were both recently adopted in 2022. We still see nothing. And then nothing continues for many more seconds. At last, the end is right here. This white line represents the Planck length, the shortest distance that can be measured. This is the limit, nothing can be smaller than this. The only things that exist here are quantum foam and strings from string theory. Now we zoom out, seeing everything we saw minutes ago. We are now approaching the end of this video. Like I said before, this video was inspired by Powers of Ten, and many remakes made by other YouTubers. All of those mentioned videos, including this one, they all have one goal. Actually, two goals. One is to show you the size comparison of the universe, big and small. And two is to show you how a number can change a lot by just simply multiplying or dividing by ten. All of those videos I mentioned at the start of this video will be credited in the description. Since I have nothing else to say and I have no outro for this YouTube channel, I'm gonna have to make the music stop. Hey! Enough! No more music. The video's over. Stop! Oh my god, bro. Ah!